Two teams which fell short in their respective mother leagues this year. De La Salle University was swept by the Ateneo Blue Eagles in the UAAP Finals, while the University of San Carlos settled for third place in Sasafi. Both teams have taken the losses in stride. It's time to release all the pent-up frustrations and get right back on the winning track. It's the De La Salle University Green Archers versus the USC Warriors. This is the 2008 Philippine Collegiate Championship. There can only be one. How are you guys doing? Welcome. This is the arena in beautiful San Juan and the 2008 Phil Oil Flying V Philippine Collegiate Championships on Basketball TV. Our game today, the De La Salle University Green Archers going up against the University of San Carlos Cebu Warriors. And to bring you this game will be yours truly, Miguel Torres po. And along with me is Mr. Mike Abasolo. Mike, how are you doing today? Good, good. I'm, I'm actually excited for you, Migo, because this is your alma mater. <laughs> and I would like to say, welcome De La Salle Green Archers in the PCC. <laughs> well, you know what? This is an exciting game, not only because we'll, we'll, we'll be seeing uh, one of the most exciting teams in Metro Manila, but also one of the most exciting teams in Cebu. Let's not forget that these guys won the third place in Cesafi. We're talking about the University of San Carlos from Cebu and they have a lot of great players in tow too. Of course, this is a very young team as you can see, well behind us. Uh, they will be here to play. And uh, definitely we will have a field day calling this game because of the quality of players that both of these teams have. Uh, let's go first to our uh, uh, flying V uh, pregame discussion and uh, when we talk about uh, the, the Philippine Collegiate Championships we got to talk about how the league has been doing uh, since it's uh, first uh, the first day the first few games as you can see on your screens right now Mike uh, so far uh, Ateneo and San Beda won the respective uh, matchups so they advanced to the final eight now whoever would win in this game would face either the UV Green Lancers or the UE Red Warriors. Pero marami pa mga ibang mga teams na nagaantay din na maglaro dito sa ating Sweet 16. Of course, the best of the best only here at the Philippine Collegiate Championships. Yes. Tignan naman natin ng konti yung bracket ano, ng, uh, ng Lasal and USC. Uh, like what you've said, whoever will win today will face uh, well, the Sweet 16 ano, uh, mm. between... UV and UE, pero let's look at the De La Salle Green Archers and their road to the Sweet 16. Okay, the road to the Sweet 16. Actually, the De La Salle Green Archers were runners-up in uh -oh. this season's uh, UAP Season 71. Now they earned the right to face probably whoever is right in front of him in the next uh, few games ahead. Now, this is one of the most uh, famous teams ano, dito sa Metro Manila itong uh, DLSU Green Archers and definitely they're also one of the uh, most decorated teams seven time UAAP champions and uh, let's go over to the USC uh, Warriors this time mm -hmm. well the USC uh, Warriors cannot be discounted in this series they had their long road trip uh, they arrived Monday they practiced yesterday and now they're facing probably one of the best collegiate coaches in the Philippines and uh, of course, uh, marami tayong mga players na pakaabangan dyan. Pero isa sa mga dalawang players na titignan natin, ano Mike, are our matchups, uh, our player matchup for today. And uh, this will be between Rico Meyer Hoffer from the De La Salle University Green Archers and Joven Cortez of the USC Warriors. Definitely, Joven Cortez is a bruiser inside. Definitely, hindi magpapatalo itong si, oh, oh. si Joven Cortez <laughs> kay... Okay, Rico Marhofer. But uh, to Hove, for Hoven to survive in this uh, game, he has to put a body at least on Rico Marhofer. Their averages, Rico Marhofer from DLSU, 12.8 points, almost 10 rebounds, or 10 rebounds actually, 1.8 blocks. And also, itong si uh, Joven Cortez, good numbers, around 10 points, 6 rebounds for him. Yeah, definitely. Uh, a few of the Metro Manila colleges are eyeing this kid. So yes. there can't be no... There's no denying that this kid has uh, talent. Who will win this ball game? DLSU versus USC Warriors. Let's turn you over to courtside. Ay Calyave has this report. Thank you very much, Jess. With me here is the head coach of the USC Warriors, Coach Jeremy. Coach Jay, how are you today? Fine. Uh, magandang hapon sa yung lahat. Mas lalo yung sagasubaybay itong liga na to. So, Coach Jay, let's talk about the game. Ano po yung thoughts na going into this game, knowing that this is a do-or-die game? 
Uh, importante lang sa depensa, hindi kami magre-relax. Uh, importante kasi sa basketball yung depensa. So, hindi kami magre-relax sa depensa hanggang matapos. Alright, you heard us from Coach Jay himself. Back to the court. Sorry, sorry, sorry. The runner-up of the 2008 UAAP and automatic qualifier to the Phil Oil Flying V Sweet 16 as the number two seeded team in Group Y. Here's the De La Salle University Green Archers. Number 17, PJ Barua. Number 2008 Phil Oil Flying V Philippine Collegiate Championship. The starting lineup for... The Number DLSU 21, Green Archers, BJ Barua, JV Casio is there. 19, James I can see uh, that Manoj Chandumal who just Number came in. Yes, it's Manoj Chandumal, Region Lee. And wait a minute, this is the, the lineup actually. Hindi pa ito yung starting five. Ano? Ito pa lang yung lineup ng DLSU uh, Green Archers. And yes, Mike. This is actually the introductory phase. Oh. A normal uh, ritual. Oh, nga naman. Siyempre, no? kailangan makilala naman yung mga players from both squads. But this team is not actually a stranger to to uh, basketball fans everywhere. We all know uh, the might of the uh, DLSU Green Archers. And uh, definitely, they're here not just to impress, but to prove a point that they belong with the elite. As you see, uh, the coach, of course, of the Green Archers, Coach Franz Pumarin. Very relaxed indeed. Oh, oh, no? No? Walang uh, kakabakaba sa mukha. Actually, PJ Walsh <laughs> approached us earlier. He oh. was uh, telling, he was like complaining about the air conditioning <laughs> in the arena, and he was saying, "Don't, don't worry, PJ. Everything is gonna heat up yes. as soon as this uh, toss up is on the way." I'm sure that they're all raring to go and uh, get at it. Right now, we have the third placers in Sasafi in Cebu. It's the USC or University of San Carlos Cebu Warriors. The players are entering the court. Baker, Bautista. There's a, there's a lot of uh, guys that I'm sure a lot of our basketball fans ngayon palang nakikita, Mike. Uh, definitely. Uh, you will see right here, uh, Edward Baker was actually listed here and was born in Ormo. Mm -hmm. But he's actually born in Canada. So... Here's uh, also an interesting rookie, see Michael Cantonao. Michael Cantonao is actually a shooter. But, yeah. you know, as I've said before, a rookie, medyo erratic lang ng konti. But, well, he can, he, but he will deliver. Another player here to watch out is Emil Rowe. An uh, Phil Australian pickup by the Warriors. Yes, Emil Rowe, I believe, playing his first year of eligibility for uh, this team. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if there's something about... Uh, this this team USC Warriors it's that they're very young they're very young but don't let looks uh, deceive you as you see uh, Mr. Ray Gamboa of course of uh, the Philippine Collegiate Championship JV Casio and JV Casio and now for the University of San Carlos receiving it number 14 Paul Joven Paul Norman Hoven. Paul Hoven, the team's top Lord assistant this season. How will he fare against this very experienced squad from Metro Manila? We'll know in a short while as the players' customary sign of respect and sportsmanship, of course, Mike. Mm -hmm. Para Olympics, ano, Miko? Oh, siyempre. Oh, oh. Pero uh, wala lang yung souvenirs. <laughs> <laughs> Our starting lineup. At center, it's Ferdinand Maui Villanueva for at forward, Joshua Webb at forward, Bader Malabes at guard, Hiram Bagatsing at the other guard for the LSU, USCS Blanes, Cortez, Gallarde, Padillo, and Paul Hoven at point guard. Definitely, the uh, the Warriors here will go for the jugular, with, as you can see from their starting lineup. The De La Salle Green Archers, however, yes. will actually feel their way into this uh, ball game first. Mm -hmm. They're, they're going to size up the Warriors first before they, you know, go for the kill later on. Alam mo itong DLSU Green Archers have yet to have a winning season in the PCC. As we'd like to thank our friends from KFC and Smart for helping us with the Philippine Collegiate Championships, the 2008 edition. 
Joshua Webb pops from threes. Not good. Paul Hoven with a rebound. Hoven slows it down just a bit. Nagita mo yung positioning, ano? And uh, everybody just trying to feel each other first. Mm -hmm. Lianes, the three. It's short. Ball will go back to the Green Archers. This is uh, sometimes a normal practice in basketball, Migo. You establish the, your perimeter game first. And if you don't hit, you go inside and headhunt. Aram Bagatin doing point guard duties. We saw just a considerable amount of Hiram Bagatin during the season, their collegiate season. But right now, I think he's going to be given a chance. As you see, Bader Malabes missed a three-pointer right there. Hoven again with the rebound. And a good boxing out, I guess, for the Warriors trying to deny DLSU uh, another uh, or another offensive set. So far, they are, uh, both teams are playing good defense. Giannis hindi pumasok ang tira, the rebound. Bell for it. Well, the green shirt stepped it last, so it will go to DLSU. Actually, both, uh, they had a good look there. They just weren't able to convert. Hiram Bagaching against Paul Hoven. These are two young people, or uh, young players, going up against each other. And I'm sure that, you know, all of these... Uh, kids right now will benefit definitely from the exposure that they're getting. Of course, from the experience, from the, uh, a very good system that LaSalle has. And the USC, uh, okay, uh, some pointers to, uh, that I'd like to point out, some Cebuano teams would like to to make the perimeter their staple. Oh. So talagang, this is very practical a shooting team well, we have for the Warriors. A lot of shooters actually came from Cebu. One of the most notable shooters that we, we've seen in recent years is, uh, well, naglalaro na sa professional ngayon, si Dondon Honteveros, but came from the University of Cebu. Yeah. As you see, wala pa rin po tayong uh, score. At yeah. 7.58 remaining here in the first quarter. But we Malapit. actually have yes. our first turnover from uh, some wanted uh, press of the De La Salle oh. Archers. Maui San gives it over to Hiram Bagatsing, the three! Yes! And DLSU draws first blood. Actually, the Warriors are tried to deny the paint, but actually, Bagat Singh was, was, was left wide open for that there shot. There goes that press once more. Bagat Singh again. Look at all the white shirts just jumping around, <laughs> trying to get the rebound. Now, what does USC have to do in order to be able to control the game? Well, actually, they have to put bodies on the big men of the De La Salle Green Archers. Because once they get the rebound, automatically the Green Archers will push the ball. Definitely, that will be a challenge for the USC Warriors, basically, because this is a good rebounding team. That's well, right. Rico Meyer Hoffer's not yet there. James Mangahas and PJ Walsham also not yet playing. But I'm sure that once those guys get in, it will be <laughs> a different hey story. Day. Yes, inside the paint, as you see a good block against Ferdinand. Yeah. So far, the Warriors are still standing toe to toe with the Green Archers. They're still in the ball game with six minutes well, left. It's very early. It's just a three-point lead, but they have to score, Mike, if they want to at least have a, a good uh, start here in this game. Of course, as you see, Hoven ties the ball game right away. Like I said, these guys are not gun shy. These guys can really burn out from the perimeter. It's three all. Six twenty-two remaining. Oh, the steal by Hoven. That was good press by uh, Paul Hoven against Hiram Bagating. Panillo gives it over to Blanes. Hoven again setting it up. Number eight, that's from the USC side. The three. Not good, but good, uh, good offensive rebound here for uh, the Warriors. As you see Hoven intelligently setting it back up. Yeah, again, Ferdinand not boxing out properly in that play. They are really trigger happy from the three-point line, Mike. Yes. <laughs> That's right. Like, like we said, it's actually their staple. Yes. They, they, these guys are really not gun-shy. Yes. As you see, a foul called. Edward Baker. Yes, will come in. An un actually, an underside, uh, undersized uh, power forward. And also about to come in are Hermosa and, well, papalitan ni uh, Baker si Galliarde who pick up this foul, first foul. Three all, if you just tuned in, 
You're just right on time. We're starting the game between the De La Salle Green Archers and the University of San Carlos Cebu. As you see, Paul Hoven slicing through the middle and getting that lay-in. That was actually a very deceiving move by Hoven. <laughs> the Green Archers thought that he would pass and give up the ball. Alamo, uh, that's an advantage uh, if for, I guess, for uh, the Warriors that not a lot of tapes are available for yeah, them to be scouted. We were talking about <laughs> the coach Kanina that that the tapes of their games were not available for the De La Salle to yeah. view. But so then, it's actually an advantage for them. The element uh, of surprise uh, oh. is with the USC Warriors. Now, everybody knows that uh, the De La Salle Green Archers have been playing for a long time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely. And they've already had a lot of experience. Experience is on their side. But in terms of, I guess, the element of surprise, wala na sa kanila. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, it's also a compliment to Coach Franz Kumaran. Who, who wouldn't want to beat Coach Franz Kumaran? Yes, Probably of one of the best collegiate coaches in collegiate and basketball. Like what I said, one of the most decorated also is this team. As you see, Hoven, once again, this is it off to number... 15, yan po si Giovanni Padillo averaged 11.9 points per game in Sasafi last season. Again, the extra pass by Hoven made that possible. Again, award awareness. Awareness of your teammates where they are. This team, I'm talking about uh, the USC Warriors I know, from Cebu, played against the University of Cebu in uh, the third place battle in Sesafi, which we actually covered yeah. uh, back around October. Mm -hmm. And we saw that this team, apart from wanting to shoot the ball a lot, they, this team likes to run. Yeah, correct. Because they know that they're small. And of course, when you're small, and always on thinking mo is quickness. And you have to go up and down the court. It's the normal uh, pattern in basketball but they're also facing a team who likes to run a lot as you see Chandumal gives it over to Bader Malabes Mendoza the scoop from underneath is not good the rebound taken in once again by Padillo and USC really doing a good job on the boards Mike correct uh, they're really controlling the boards right now and that's the reason why they have uh, so many possessions for them to stay at least uh, up close with the De La Salvinar Sabayan man lang ang Lasal as uh, we talked about it earlier yeah. uh, before the game. Correct. Another foul and a basket this time. It will be Hermosa will be going to the line. Well, so far so good. Coach Franz Pumaran is not pulling the strings. Uh, yeah, it's not yeah. pushing the panic button yet. But JV Casio is in the ball game for some scoring, for some defense, and veteran presence, of and, course. Uh, some some presence to calm themselves down. Yes. Almo mga bata to mga naglalaro for DLSU in the line up here that coach uh, coach Franz Pomaren is using. Yeah, especially with Chanduma on yes. the lineup. Mendoza, Villanueva. Yeah. Uh, Malabes was there uh, about a couple of seasons ago and also Casho definitely is the team leader. Yeah. So the calming the presence oh. on the court. It's 408 remaining here in the first quarter. USC leads it by 5, 8 to 3. Chandumal gives it over, inbound pass to Mendoza. Malabe sets things. Now, if you're DLSU, how are you how are you supposed to approach this ball game? Well, well so far, they're, they're really still in they're still in the ball game. Uh, actually the, the the Warriors are really trying to keep up by playing really good head-to-head -head defense against the Green Archers. Unfortunately, at that time, it will be good defense played by La Salle as they force another turnover. And, Mike, if there's anything that we know about the De La Salle Green Archers, is their emphasis on defense, particularly the full-court press. The full-court press. Yes. We, we, everybody knows about their vaunted full-court press. And that's going to happen in a little while. If uh, Coach Franz Romarin feels that we need to take control of this ball game. Well, he already inserted James Mangahas into the lineup as he was blocked by Hermosa. 12 seconds left in the shot clock of DLSU. But this should mean that Coach Pomarin started to get a little more concerned with uh, the score. Yeah. Time out on the floor. Coach Franz Pomarin wants to talk things over with the Green Archers. We'll be right back.
2008 Phil Oil Flying V Philippine Collegiate Championships. It's La Salle against San Carlos here at the arena, of course, in San Juan. Miguel Torres along with Mike Abasolo and Aika Liave uh -huh. bringing you the game. Uh -huh. You know, this is a... Uh, this is a very exciting ball game because whoever will face this or whoever will win this will definitely face another formidable squad either who wins between the UE UV match. Guys, either if if San Carlos would win this ball game, they would either face UV, another Cebu, uh -huh. Cebu team, and or of course another warrior in the UE Red Warriors. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, actually, if, if you're familiar with number nine, uh, that's uh, Jacques Bautista. He's actually mm -hmm. from UPIS and one of the play players that a uh, few players that ventured into the Cebu uh, teams. Another one of those players who ventured into the Cebu uh, Cebu side of things would be Sam Hermosa. I was playing right now, number thirteen, played for the BCU Dolphins way back in two thousand and six. Correct. So. Hindi lang sila talaga dapat oh, oh. Sa Metro Manila. They also have to go there and play. Oh naman. You know the quality of competition in Cebu is also high actually as uh, what you've seen there's three Cebuano teams here in this league in the PCC Sweet 16. We have the USC Warriors and then there's the University of San Jose Recoletos and the, uh, the champions of the Sisafi, of course, the UV Green Lancers featuring their 6'11 slotman, Greg Slaughter. Actually, I really like this PCC tournament because it really brings out the best in everybody yes. who would like to play the top teams in Metro Manila. The best of the best. Yep. Iga nga. Iga nga. You can't be the best if you can't beat the best. Yes, <laughs> that's right. 8-7, to seven, USC is still in the lead. And Coach Franz Pomarin slowly but surely inserting his regulars already into the ball game as uh, PJ Barue is set to come in. Of course, PJ Barue playing for the semi pro already. The shot, not good. A foul will be called away from the ball. James Mangahas, the guilty party, and it will be penalty time against all the Green Archers. So far you can see Coach uh, Franz Kumar yeah. inserting all the starters. Yes, yeah, usual starters at least. Yeah, usual starters because they can't get any production from their second Rico stringers. There you go. Rico Meyer Hoff already in the ball game. PJ Barua also. And James Mangahas will take a breather as ML Rowe is on the free throw line. Nice hairstyle. Yes. Colored hairstyle, if you may. <laughs> Emil Rowe is a Phil Aussie who played in Melbourne Australia last might. year. Australia, mate. Yes, mate. <laughs> Number 17, a forward, if you may <laughs> say. <laughs> no, but Emil Rowe is 6'4. He's used to playing a wingman. And, but, but here in the, in the USC squad, he's being used as a big guy because of their lack of height. Yes, correct. Uh, their lack of size, probably a 6'2", 6'1", guy would be used as a power forward yes. in their league. In their league. But know, there are also lots of tall guys uh, who we saw play in Cebu yeah. who are definitely worth noting. But uh, I think some of them are not going to be playing here in the PCC. Mm -hmm. As you see, PJ Barua missing their free throw or his free throw. It's 9-all, 2-16 remaining in the first quarter. Let's turn you over to Aikal Yaves. Well, the USC Warriors may feel like the underdogs in today's ball game, having mostly young players. But like Coach Jay Ramirez said earlier, they came here to play and to fight hard. Coach Jay also encourages players to just enjoy the game and give it their best shot. Mike and Mix. Thank you very much, Aika. Mike and Mix. Yes. Alos pareho lang eh, no? The two M's. Yes. It's time for USC to take a timeout. We'll be right back. Nine all. This is the Sweet 16 of the Philippine Collegiate Championships. PCC Sweet 16. Time for the KFC Assist of the Quarter. It's Mendoza to PJ Barua for the potential end one situation. KFC, it's finger licking good. It's 150 remaining here in the first quarter. Chandumal being hounded by Bautista Meyerhofer. 
They have 12 seconds to shoot. Marhofer gives it to JV Casho. The screen. Barua decides to shoot at a block. But then a foul will be called. Two shots for PJ Barua. The guilty party will be on James Blanis. Well, James Blanis there made a great help. But unfortunately, he got the arm of uh, PJ Barua in that play. Oh. So that will be take two for him. And alam mo, itong si PJ Barua loves that shot. Attacking the basket. And then will go for either the running hook or the floater. I don't know yata si Mac Macadon. Oh, I will also eventually play or, or also... Uh, played for DLSU and mm -hmm. also wearing his number back yeah. in his collegiate days. <laughs> <laughs> so well, there's some re resemblance in that shot. Yes. Whoa. Picking up the missed free throw by Barua. Bautista directing duties for the USC Warriors. Row high up from three-point line. Oh, missed connection. But looks like it will be a foul against PJ Barua and that would mean free throws for the USC Warriors. It's actually a holding foul on PJ Barua in that play. That's the reason why one of the USC uh, Warriors wasn't able to make that, that uh, cut. Sam Hermosa played for the PCU Dolphins in 2006. This time playing for the Warriors of USC. Makes his first free throw. This has stayed uh, as, uh, you know, this, this uh, is continuing to become a seesaw battle, Mike. And why do you think is this happening right now? No, so far, both teams are playing good defense. Uh, defensively, both teams are really locked down on, our, uh, on their man. And I guess it's uh, only because of uh, the defensive orientation of both of these squads. Yeah, they're actually, the, the Warriors are actually matching up pretty well with the Green Archers. And they're also doing their press quite well. You know? uh, we see a lot of press from DLSU, but also a lot of defensive effort uh, going along the way of the USC Warriors. Yeah, Bo uh, both teams are really trying to cover their man pretty well. They're really sticking to their man. <laughs> it's not really a passive press that they're employing. It's they're not just active and yes. denying. It's not just going through the motions of the defense, uh, the defensive play, but taking it into heart is to see JV Casho score his first point of the ball game. And if you're Coach Franz Pumarin, you want him to score more than these two free throws. Of course. Of course, he, he is the Green Archers as a primary weapon on offense. You know, right now, the, uh, the offense of LaSalle still has not clicked. Yeah, but uh, once this starts rolling, we all know that they're a well-oiled machine mm -hmm. when it comes to offense. Just like that one, as you see Meyer Hopper stuff it down. That's sure to boost the morale of the LSU, Mike. Well, actually, the one that triggers the Green Archers' uh, offense is actually their defense. And that time, they really played uh, great defense on the Warriors. And also, another great defensive effort and good rebounding as the Archers, once again, set the basketball, trying to pull further away from the USC Warriors. P.J. Barua spots for three. Yes! It's now a seven-point lead all of a sudden with 33 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. 17-10 to 10 DLSU as another miscommunication between two Warriors. Actually, Sam Hermosa panicked there. He thought that he couldn't take on uh, one of the green archers of the dribble, so he gave it back to Bautista. As you see, Rico Meyerhofer doing the flying V slam dunk. Another, oh, well, this one is a turnover, or will it be a foul, an offensive foul against P.J. Walsham? Yes, it will be. So far for the, for the Warriors to get back on this game, they have to lessen their turnovers and take care of the basketball. Regent Lee coming into the ball game for... The main man, J.V. Casho, still a seven-point lead. Yes, yes Actually, the Warriors have just to get acclimatized to the pressing defense of the, of the Green Archers. And they have to figure out how to get out of that, uh, that slump right now that they're having. Another turnover by the Warriors. You know, if you would notice, Mike, you know, the press of DLSU, if you were a running team... You know, if you're a running team, you'd be able, if you break that press, you have the advantage already because you see the big guys right up front. Mm -hmm. That's the right. Press. Uh, just don't dribble too much and then look for the open man. The first thing that you're going to do is the open man. Like, for example, Sayang yung Hermosa almost had a great 
DLSU ends the first quarter with a 14 to 2 run, 17 to 10 is the score. We'll be right back with second quarter action. The Phil Oil Flying V PCC on Basketball TV. Second quarter of the 2008 Phil Oil Flying V Philippine Collegiate Championships, DLSU against USC, the Archers, seven point lead, Mike 14 to 2 run to end the first quarter. Yeah, so far this is the biggest lead of the ball game at seven points. Now that the Green Archers are in the driver's seat, uh, with their starters on the floor, let's see if they can uh, still control. This ball game over the Warriors. 32% field goal percentage for the DLSU Green Archers. 19% only for the USC Warriors. As you look at the turnover story, it's 5-8. to eight. Well, I guess that will be 6-8 to eight now. <laughs> Assuming we were talking about this player a while ago, uh, Cantona. He's yes. really a shooter, but a streaky shooter. Once he's getting on, he's really on. 17-13. to 13. We'd like to thank KFC and Smart for helping us with the 2008 Philippine Flying V Philippine Collegiate Championships as USC starting the quarter well a couple of uh, defensive stops yep so far the Warriors are playing the passing lanes against the Green Archers and they're doing a good job at it Meyer Hoffer rebound uh, rebound now running the break doesn't get the roll but then Meyerhofer fouling. Maybe na frustrate ng konti don si Rico. Yeah, just a bit. Uh, Rico Meyerhofer had a great idea to make a quick attack, but unfortunately he didn't make it, and the Warriors got the rebound. And another possession for them to at least get some uh, something out of this next possession, keep the game close. Hoven coming back in for leadership. Yep, and point guard stability yes. in the backcourt because and this is another press again yes. by the Green Archers. Casho also back in for Coach Franz Pumaren. Hermosa against PJ Barua. This Almost is, a steal there. Yep, this is what the Green Archers want from their oh. press for you to dribble down the ball all the way. Oven goes to Rowe being guarded by Walsham. Rowe has the advantage of speed. He crosses over the fake, the shot, it will be traveling. Yep, he hesitated there. That's the reason why for the traveling violation of Emma Rowe. But he knew that he had the advantage there for uh, against PJ Walsham. 17 to 13, 842 remaining here in the second. Hiram Bagaching also in, uh, in the ball game for Coach Franz Tumaren being hounded by Cantonau. You know, none of these two teams have uh, pulled away. Would it be because of the defense or is it just because uh, they're having a hard time setting their offense? Uh, so far, uh, both teams are really playing uh, good defense. As you can see there, uh, PJ Walsham had a really good seal in the inside. That's the reason why he had the two points earlier. Row Over to Hermosa. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Almost fumbled the basketball. Once again, another three-pointer with just enough time to spare. James Mangahas over to Hiram Bagating, JV Casio. This is what the Warriors should do. Should fight the screens of the De La Salle Green Archer Archers. Let's go over the court side. Aikal Yavias, this report. PJ Again, PJ Walsham getting the ball inside. Well, Coach France wants his men to push harder on the USC Warriors. He wants the Green Archers to knock him dead early on this ball game. The Archers were reminded that they have to think quick and move quick as well, guys. Thank you very much, Aika. Coach France Pumarin wanting a little more quickness, yep, both mentally and physically from his mm -hmm. squad because they're not uh, they're not actually used to starting this slow yeah again again i think what he's calling trying to call for is a more energy more intensity both on the offensive oh, and defensive end like an accounting gana in the row ika nga counting in it defensive uh, substitutions once again uh, or rather strategic substitutions mm -hmm. On both baskets, on both occasions in the possession of the Green Archers, P.J. Walsham was able to get good position inside the paint. 
that's uh, four points for PJ Walsham. A couple of rebounds to go with those four points. Mm -hmm. And it will not be five just yet. 7-10 remaining. Baka ito na yan. Oh. <laughs> hopefully, you know, para hopefully, sa mga hopefully. Lasal fans. But if you're a fan of USC, you definitely would like to see the usual brand of game that USC plays in Cebu, which is run and gun and a whole lot of shooting. Mm -hmm. And here's again another vaunted press by the De La Salvin Archers. How would you avoid this kind of press, Mike? Well, you have to be patient. Uh, a lot of coaches are trying to find an antidote, but you know, you just have to be patient when you when you have a press like that, like especially coming from the De La Salvin Archers. Padilla tries to roll it in, doesn't get the shot, or Padillo. They get the ball back. 21 seconds in their shot clock. Actually, this is a bonus for the Warriors getting the ball again. Yes. Oh, I mean, the offensive rebound. James Mangahas gives it over to JV Casho, but then Malabes open for three. The three pointer is not good. PJ Walsham was there to grab the offensive board, the hook. Nothing but brick. Actually, the Green <laughs> Archers are not patient in that possession. Unfortunately, in two possessions, they weren't able to convert now. I guess it's because they're a little bit excited to pull away in this ball game, Mike. It's a yeah. nine-point lead already. They're about to reach a double-digit barrier. Mm -hmm. Almost a double-digit barrier. If Malabes would convert, not yet. No. Uh, like what you said, you know, uh, yung pasensya ng DLSU yeah. is uh, lacking in this ball game. Uh, could it be just because they're excited to get back or to get into a bigger lead, or is there something else to that? No, actually, just trying to make the game faster. As you see, Cordelia again a bonus points. there for yes. the Warriors. The Green Archers failed to box them out. Bagatching. Calling out the play for Coach Franz Bumayrin's archers. Malabes over to Mangahas. The cutting JV Casho decides to shoot it. Yes! And if we know that way, you know, JV, it's actually intended for Casho. Definitely. You know, this player can <laughs> score in a, in a lot of ways. Yes. <laughs> in, unimaginable. That's uh, somehow one of JV Casho's trademark moves. Cutting into the basket. Yung one fake pulling out a little and then just shooting it with one hand. As yep. you see, Padillo missing that shot. Once again, the archers are on the break. Malabes, he gets to lay in. Timeout, USC Warriors. DLSU leading by 11. We'll be right back. Sixteen action here at the Phil Oil Flying V Philippine Collegiate Championships, the 2008 edition DLSU against the USC Warriors. LaSalle leads it by 11, 26 to 15 halfway through the first half, or rather uh, the second quarter. Another press. Oh, yeah, actually, uh, as you can see from the lineup with Maui Villanueva and James Mangahas in, on the floor, this is a very small lineup for the Green Archers. And definitely, Coach Franz Pomarin would like to call to control this ball game early on by establishing this press. Yes, and plus the quickness, the reiteration of the quickness yep. uh, for his team. As Aika reported earlier, oh, Coach Franz Pomarin wants it to be a quick game, not just mentally but physically too. Yeah, that's the reason why uh, the Green Archers have established some rhythm, and they were able to make uh, two possessions on a, on a break on, on two breakaway layups. Ray John Lee replacing JV Casho. One uh, of the rare yes. occasions that we see Ray John Lee in a ball game for the <laughs> Green Archers. <laughs> well, definitely all of these players are ready to mix it up once they are called. Uh, as okay. The ball was deflected by Hiram Bagaching. The ball goes you, back to USC. Yeah, yes, yeah that's what you don't do when, you, when the Green Archers put on that press. is for you to give up the ball late when there's a double yes. team. Or try to do cross-court passes and they're very yeah. dangerous against La Salle. Oh, Not nice passes. spin by Joven picking up the foul. Yeah, mabilis -bilis yung pihit oh, na yun. Right? Yeah, mabilis. And he was able to challenge the interior defense of the Green Archers there. That's the reason why he had the incentive now to go into the free throw line. Pass a foul. 26-15, an 11-point lead. Joven. Paul Joven. He led the team in assists the season uh, in Sasafi. 
two points only for him, two rebounds also. Has yet to get uh, you know, his assists streak going as you see Bader Malabes earning the break for DLSU over to Ray John Lee Mangahas wanting to post up but decides to uh, Lee decides to give it over to Malabes and uh, a turnover by Villanueva good defense that time by USC Mike mm, again playing the passing lanes again challenging the perimeter players of the Green Archers Cortez over to Haven, the three misses it, but Padilla was there for the rebound. Codilla, the USC Warriors are having a hard time getting second chance points. Again, a bonus. This is a bonus for uh, the Warriors getting some offensive rebounds in spite of their uh, lack of height against the Green Archers. But their Malabes pulls the trigger early on there for Coach Franz Pumarin's Archers. And, uh, well, once again, another case of uh, early shot. Medyo nagmamadali ng konti. Mm -hmm. Correct. But the press is there once again. Maui Villanueva, too late to pull on the brakes. Slams into Padillo, called for a foul. Yeah, he didn't use his uh, footing there against uh, Hoven. And it was caught uh, reaching in. Ferdinand coming into the ball game. Actually, that was a bad foul by uh, Maui Villanueva yes. in that play. Layo-layo pa niya sa basket. Oh. Medyo na attack ng konti si Maui to get that steal. Yeah. But nonetheless, they're still leading by 11 points. 3.44 remaining here in the second. USC against DLSU. Oh, nice cut by Hoven. But a plethora of defenders from DLSU. I like that. Plethora yes. of defenders. <laughs> <laughs> Hoven was surprised he got the ball oh. from inside the paint. And so he, he decided to pass out. Momentarily, Hoven was open on that occasion but you just see the collapsing defense yeah there were like three or four all of a sudden, yes. defenders there clogging the lane Padillo against Hiram Bagating Codilio was open momentarily decides against take, decided against taking the shot 15 seconds left in the shot clock Cortez the fake the turnaround too strong but there Malabes with the rebound yeah. Great position there by Mark Mendoza, not giving Hoven Cortez any room. But then Hiram Bagatzing. This is the second time that I didn't see the Warriors challenge Bagatzing <laughs> from the outside. They should respect that shot of Bagatzing yeah, more. And, yeah, and we know that Bagatzing can sometimes hit it from there. Yes. And I thought that they were like watching the DLSU tapes. <laughs> <laughs> well, they were. I guess they were caught off guard. <laughs> Not expecting that shot from Hiram Bagaching. Because if you would look at the tapes, if you look at the past games of DLSU, you know, yeah. you'd see that Bagaching doesn't necessarily take uh, a lot of need to take a lot of shots yeah. every night. Yeah, Hoven Cortez was uh, caught with a three second violation for thinking too much who to give the basketball to. Well, Hoven Cortez, uh, one of the big boys for Coach Jay Ramirez. Ball tapped away. They still have 18 seconds on the shot clock as you see Sam Hermosa coming back into the ball game for Coach Jay Ramirez and the USC Warriors. Webb and Ferdinand getting, uh, plus Mark Mendoza getting a lot of playing time here. Good exposure for both of them. Uh, yeah. Of course, we know uh, from uh, their collegiate finals that Ferdinand, you know, he's been playing for those two games. Na yon. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess he's been given a chance to hone his skill even further. Yeah. Last year, he, he practically disappeared. Yes, almost. But previous year in Season 70, he was like playing... When they won the championship, they were really playing. He was really playing great, but last year was a a, a bit of a disappointment for him. Well, hopefully he bounces back here, yeah, sa PCC because yep. you know this, there's no perfect, no more perfect stage to showcase your talent than the national championships. Mm -hmm. Thirty-one fifteen. May kalahati na yung kalamangan. Kalamangan. <laughs> kalamangan. Again, the De La Salle Green Archers wanted press, trying to tighten the floor. As you see, Hermosa break that press, scoring two points. Actually, that's the first thing that you do is to attack once you break the press. But we don't have numbers. You tend to pull the basket away. The field goals for the second quarter. La Salle 5 and 12. 5 out of 12. The Warriors, 3 out of 16. Not uh, good percentages for both of these squads. But then... Um, Nakakaangat pa rin ng DLSU Of course 
well, at least the Warriors here are trying to stay in the ball game. It's still, it's still not too late. <laughs> There's still two more quarters of uh, good basketball here to be played. And this is just, uh, well, this is not yet a 20-point lead. So, alam mo may kano when when uh, when you're a team and you see it's a 20-point lead, minsan lang hindi ka Oh, alam konti lang naman. Oh, but if you see that you st- it's still within reach, yeah. Because you, you still feel that uh, the ball game is not yet won by the other team, so you still have that heart. Mm-hmm. And now Joven Cortez trying to realize that there was a mismatch. He's trying to get something in, from inside the paint. As to see Cordelia convert on that occasion, 31 and 19, 133 remaining. Joshua Webb breaking. USC's version of the press. Well, I'm surprised that Webb was the one. Tur- yes. Yeah, he almost had a turnover there. <laughs> you don't, you don't let your uh, power forward or small forward bring down the ball uh, against the press. Yeah. You have to hit your point guard, but then again on that occasion, walang nagawa ang Lasal. As you see, our KFC assist delivery of the quarter. That's Malabes going over to Hiram Bagaching for three KFC. It's finger licking good. Ferdinand, his first free throw, misses. As you see, Coach Franz Pumarin uh, showing some tips to his boys. Of course. <laughs> as, as usual, the very relaxed uh, Franz Pumarin enjoying the ball game. Ferdinand throws that one in the air. Actually, I really admire Coach Franz Pumarin for turning his boys into real basketball players. Uh, really complete skills kumbaga alam mo the good part about the the team of coach Franz Kumarin is that it's the system that makes it going that gets it going for your, the team itself yeah. I mean they've lost players left and right and good ones at that every year they lose uh, key players and they will be losing one next season uh, with JV Casho graduating already or uh, finishing his playing years mm-hmm. but still there's always someone who will pick up the slack and that's like, once again because of the system that was being established here in uh, this La Salle squad now we're talking about their uh, Migos in the case of uh, Ray John Lee and uh, Joshua Webb trying right, yes. to pick up some pointers from, from probably one of the best collegiate coaches of this era yes as you see, Sam Hermosa go back to the line. Five points for him. It's just an 11-point lead. Actually, we were talking about him uh, a while ago from uh, being in PCU. But he's actually from Cebu. So ah, there's a natural progression for him to ah, play in the, his own hometown. Oh, Correct. Homegrown pala siya in Cebu. This would be going back to the USC Warriors. Just under a minute remaining here. Time out. De La Salle Green Archers will be right back. The arena in San Juan. This is where the 2008 Phil Oil Flying V Philippine Collegiate Championships is happening right now. It's USC against DLSU, 59.4 seconds remaining in the second. DLSU up by 11, 31 to 20. Actually, when, when Coach Franz Pumarin called the timeout there with only 59 seconds, you actually wanted to, 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 to finish the first half strong and final, maybe some defensive adjustments. If so at least yes. the Warriors wouldn't recover from this uh, <laughs> less than one minute of the first half. But if you're Coach Jay Ramirez, you would also like to finish this one strong and at least, you know, try to bring it down to single digits so that morally you don't have to go to the locker room with a, with a double-digit deficit in mind. Of course. Uh, again, the Warriors not taking advantage of the timeout. They didn't put a body on, uh, on Webb for the two points. So that's a poor defensive uh, effort for the Warriors there. And once again, they have to worry about the full-court press that LaSalle will employ against them here to end the first half. The man breaks it uh, easily though. Mm-hmm. This is actually a one to two possession first half. Baker the shot. Missed. He had a good look there and yes. just didn't go in. Good line. Yeah. Just didn't go in for Baker traveling against Hiram Bagaching. 
And if you're of course France Moir and you don't want to see that with just 16.5 seconds remaining yeah. in the first half. And giving the a chance for the Warriors there to score. Again, uh, Bagasin forgot to put on the brakes there, probably <laughs> panicked a little bit. Hermosa will be tasked to do the inbounds. As you see, Rage and Lee set to come in for defensive purposes. Giving some uh, minutes to the, uh, some seconds yes. to the kid, at least to make a stop here. They're still doing the press, of course, with only 15 seconds remaining here in the first half. Baker over to Cortez, the jumper by Cortez doesn't go in. And Ferdinand tried to tap it over to Ray John Lee. It was just not. Uh, it was just not caught. Yes. Yeah. Four four seconds is still a long time to make a shot here to end the to end the first half. Hoven fakes the jumper. Baker wide open for three. Did not go. That does it for the first half of action. 33 to 20, Mike. And LaSalle has uh, started, or rather, is starting to feel a little more comfortable with this game. Mm -hmm. So far, uh, we haven't, uh, we've heard of uh, the De La Salle Green Archers uh, not having much uh, practice time. But so far, they're getting into the groove, they're getting some rhythm. Uh, so far, this is not a lost cause for the Warriors. They're still in the ball game with, thir with a 13 point deficit. Well, who knows uh, what kind of pep talk uh, will Jay Ramirez give to his boys and then start the, first, uh, the second half with a great start. The University of San Carlos Warriors had a hard time you know, trying to break the press of DLSU. But right now, let's go over to Aika Liave for this report. Well, again, with me here is Coach Jay Ramirez. Now, Coach Jay, narinig natin kanina that you were saying na you came here just to fight kahit hindi manalo. But narinig din natin kanina that you were commending the guys for trying hard. Talaga, ano pa yung, ano pa yung areas of improvement na kailangan natin gawin? Ah, uh, di lang kami makasyot sa open eh. So far, so good naman. Maganda naman yung defense namin. Ang problema namin, di kami makasyot. Mga bata namin, nagmamadali, nanilibago dito. So, yan lang. I-adjust lang namin yung upis namin, kaya ilang ma-shoot namin. Marami kami at him. Ay, uh, ang problema naman, hindi namin ma-shoot yung bola. Alright, Coach. Good luck on that. I hope you make a better game plan. Back to you guys. Thank you very much, Aika. We'll break this game at the half when we return. It's halftime here at the 2008 Real Oil Flying V Philippine Collegiate Championships. De La Salle University up by 13 against University of San Carlos. for breaking this game down at uh, the half now. Miguel Torres along with Mike Abasolo. And Mike, during the first half, uh, both of these teams started toe-to-toe, -to -toe, but then DLSU got their game going towards the end of the first half, and they pulled away for a 13-point lead. Actually, the De La Salle Green Archers are a bit rusty. Uh, they haven't uh, really practiced well, and uh, while the University of San Carlos Warriors are actually there, they, uh, they are actually playing good defense, as Jay Ramirez indicated earlier in the uh, report by uh, Ms. Llave. Llave. They're, they're hanging in there. Um, actually, in the rebounds picture, actually with 30 to against uh, 25 by, uh, by the USC uh, Warriors, the De La Salle Archers are really doing a good job on the boards. But the real story here is the second chance points and the turnover points of okay. the De La Salle Green Archers. Yes. Actually, their, uh, their pressing defense is actually doing wonders for them, as usual. If you, Again, yes. uh, if you look at it, the disparity between the two teams when it comes to turn turnovers, it's not that big. It's the kalake. points of turnovers actually that got them going. Let's uh, try to look at the leading scorers already. P.J. Barua and Hiram Bagaching both with 6 for DLSU. P.J. Walsh with 5. Hermosa with 6. Joven or Joven with 5. And Codilia with 4 for USC Warriors. And you know what? Nobody's scoring double digits just yeah, yet. Mike. That's a no. great observation, Migo. <laughs> None of them. E either, nowhere near. Yeah, nowhere near the double digit mark. 
Uh, we're looking at a, a very exciting second half because both of these teams actually want to get it going already. We saw during the end of the first half that both of these teams wanted to run the break already, and both of these teams want to take it straight, mm -hmm. uh, straight to pierce the heart of the opposing team. What do they need to do later on? Actually, uh, the Warriors need to play excellent defense, push the ball harder. Uh, the Green Archers really have to play a fast-paced fast game to get ahead, actually, of the, uh, the, the Warriors. When we come back, we'll bring you exciting second-half action. This is 2008 Phil Oil Flying V PCC. To the 2008 Philo Flying V Philippine Collegiate Championships, La Salle against San Carlos. Actually, to continue our conversation earlier, Migo. Yes. Here, as you can see, the Warriors are trying to take away the green, uh, uh, take take away, uh, out of the rhythm of the Green Archers here mm -hmm. as they open the second half. Um, actually, the, uh, the other story behind the De La Salle resurgence for a 13-point is their assist level. Mm -hmm. They try to look for the open man, unlike the Warriors are trying to settle for uh, for only a shot from inside, probably from inside the paint or from outside the perimeter. Instead of trying to look for a better shot or trying to rotate the ball, Even they just better. end up a pass and then a shot. Yeah, actually there are no shortcuts in basketball. That we've been talking about uh, having shortcuts in basketball. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, involving your teammates in the rhythm of the game is actually better for you. More touches, I guess. Yeah, more, more touches. options. Yeah, more options. Sayang yung pasang itinapon ni Galliarde. Th that could have been, uh, well, another two points or even a three point uh, shot for USC, but then they throw the ball away. Yeah, actually, that's a turnover that you, can't, that you don't want to have. No, you don't stand a chance mm -hmm. in that turnover. Tinapon na lang basta. Gagi mo na lang sa kalaban yung bola, di ba? Ganun ba talaga kadikit yung depensa na yun? Or were they just caught to their pants down to USC? Actually, it was actually a poor communication, bad execution by the by the Warriors there. Shandumal, Meyerhofer, Mendoza, Casio, Barua starting it for the Green Archers here in the second half. Meyerhofer, 7 seconds on their shot clock. Sandumal drives. This is it over to PJ Barua. Lost it. Medyo nag uh, karon ng konting problema si PJ doon on that occasion, Mike. But this time, it's time for USC to get things going on their side. Galliarde. Over to Cortez. Driving against Rico Meyer Hoffer. Seven seconds left on their shot clock. Hoven, the drive, the dish. Cortez hits nothing but the side of the board. The fake. Oh, a foul by Rico Meyerhofer with just one second on the shot clock. It was actually a great shot fake there by Hoven Cortez against uh, Rico Meyerhofer. But in the dying seconds of yes. the shot clock, you don't want to foul like that. Yes, uh, if you're observant enough to look at the shot clock, you know, uh, siguro what Rico could have done there was just stand up and raise his hands, stand mm -hmm. straight, you know? Yeah, actually, the Warriors there had the great open looks. It's just that uh, they were too patient yes. in that play. Yeah, yun nga. I mean, uh, they had lots of looks already, lots of chances to score. Mm -hmm. It was just that, I know, were they just second-guessing, starting to second-guess themselves or nahihirapan na ba silang Maghanap ng tira. No, no, actually trying to be unselfish mm -hmm. in that uh, play. There, of course, we, we talked about yes. sharing the basketball more. Mm -hmm. I guess they, they, they talked. Yeah, nila tayo. <laughs> they were talking about it in the dugout that they that the Green Archers had more assists than them. Yes. So they tried to share the basketball more. Rico Meyer Hoffer gets his own miss. PJ Barua this time. Almost a careless pass there yes. by Rico. Chandumal open for three. Meyerhofer once again. Oh, nice. No look pass to Mendoza. And a foul against number 18. That's against Cortez. That would mean free throws for Mendoza. His second personal already. Itong si uh, Cortez. As you see Rowe coming in to the ball game once more. Actually, that was a, a great re uh, reception by uh, Mark Mendoza of a cut 
you know, extra passes yes. makes extra wonders for you. And of course, there's also the fact that Rico Meyerhofer, babantayan at babantayan mo talaga tong batang ito dahil yeah. you can't leave him open and yeah. so nagkaroon ng opening itong si Mendoza ngayon. Correct. He slipped through the defense <laughs> and you know, Rico Meyerhofer underneath attracts so much attention. Yes, because he can take, you know, don't be fooled by his uh, physique, ano? Yeah. Papayat yan. <laughs> and by his looks. Yes. <laughs> Pero kaya niya magdala ng kahit triple team. Yep. Oh, what a shot by Gagliarde. Again, you know, the rebound disparity of both these teams. Yes. Uh, offensively, the first half is just a point difference between these two. So, it's actually a bonus with their size. The Warriors are actually can stay in this game if they continue to do those uh, offensive rebounding chores. Just a correction, it was Padillo who got that shot. In Meyerhofer, putting oh, back the JV Casio miss for two more points. Actually, may konting gulang si Rico Meyerhofer doon. You know, I gotta hand it to Rico Meyerhofer. It was actually experience. Yeah, he's using experience and brains to get the advantage, of course. It's a 15-point lead. 741 remaining here in the third. Padillo against Chandumal. The three is good. Again, we're talking we've been talking about the staple of any Cebu team. Actually, the perimeter shots and so far we, are yes. falling for them. You know, if we talk about scoring, you know, hindi talaga nahihiya ito mga players ng USC. No, they're, they're, they're not gun shy. Yes. <laughs> and uh, even their history posts a whole lot of greats just like, uh, I believe, Ramon Fernandez was mm -hmm. from USC and also Lauro Mumar. Yeah, so Lauro these Mumar. guys definitely are part of the tradition of USC and this latest uh, latest incarnation of uh, the Warriors want to prove that they belong with those great guys na rin. Yep. Actually, Chantumal, yes. actually a great turnover by the uh, Warriors there. Mm -hmm. Green Yarders wasn't just able to convert. Sayang yung layup ni Sandumal, but then they have to go back to defense. Meyerhofer hobbling, or rather uh, disrupting that shot by Galliarde. And if you see Rico Meyerhofer yeah. jumping Parang wala lang, no? Oh. Parang wala lang, kinokon lang yung bola. Okay, let me Ooh. take that candy away from you. Offensive foul called against Rico Meyerhofer. Oh, it's third already. You, you don't want Rico Meyerhofer's third foul coming here in the third quarter halfway. Actually, that was that is actually one of the weaknesses of uh, Rico Meyerhofer giving, giving up so much fouls. So he will have to sit it out probably in the next quarter. And kailangan siguro ipahinga ng kaunti itong si Rico Meyerhofer. Pero sayang because he's already starting to heat up. Hoven mm -hmm. mm -hmm. will do inbound duties. Here comes the press once more for DLSU. JV Casio is here. And you know, JV Casio is so good an offensive player that sometimes people forget how good also he is in defense. That's correct. That's a good observation, Nico. I was about to say that if he didn't say that <laughs> JV Casio wasn't really a good defender, he's actually a very silent defender, JV Casio. He, he does uh, things, you he, know? Yeah, he does things. He, does, he creates something for you defensively. He's actually a lockdown defender if you come to think about and watch him play. And uh, also, he's uh, part of one of the final holdovers of that team that had, uh, well, a very scary press, if you may. Mm -hmm. That was the time where T.Y. Tang was playing, and there's also uh, Villanueva, Cholo Villanueva. So those two are very defensive-oriented guards. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to miss J.V. Kasha for next se and season 72. He's actually a... He's actually a sight to see on the court, you know, plays defensively, he can play it for himself. That's, that's J.V. Casio. Talking about J.V. Casio and his shot just falling in, making it 40 to 29. We'd like to thank KFC and Smart for helping us out with the 2008 Philo Flying V Philippine Collegiate Championships. 533 remaining here in the third quarter. LaSalle against USC. Oh, nice crossover by J.V. Casio finds Joshua Webb. All day to shoot. Just a little too short. Yeah, he had all day. And USC once again throws away another opportunity. And you know, they've been trying to push the fast break. They've been trying to push a whole lot of offensive sets. They should be a little bit more patient. Patient. Uh, that's an unforced turnover. 
by the Warriors. Uh, they just threw away the basketball. Bigim na lang sa kalabo. Let's turn you over to Michael Yave for this report. Well, the Archers may have had the upper hand on the first half of this ball game, but it ain't over till it's over. The Archers have to continue in tightening up their defense, and Coach France continuously reminded them that they have to always stay in front of their man, boy. Thank you very much, Aiko, for that report. And Coach Franz Pomarin, tama rin naman siya, huwag magkumbiyansa. Actually, uh, tama si the report ni Yavidon. That's what the Green Archers have been trying to do right now. He's just trying to stay in front of their man, not to overreach. And, you know, who, who knows? Another turnover for them, another opportunity. Three-point shot by James Mangas makes it a 12-point lead. With just 4.44 remaining here in the third, Hoven goes over to... Let me see, this is uh, Cantona. Roll! Slicing it in against Walsham. Gets it to roll. One of the rare times that we see uh, roll. Roll, yes. roll your boat. <laughs> Going with the paint. Oh, another turnover against LaSalle. And you know what? This time it was... Uh, time for USC to do the press and it worked mm -hmm. for them on that occasion uh, Joshua Joshua Webb trying to reach in there he should have used his footwork or lateral uh, movement to stop that penetration but then Joshua Webb a young player for DLSU being given the opportunity to shine and this will do him actually good in yeah. the long run especially if he goes on to play if mm -hmm. LaSalle gets to go on to the other rounds this would prove good for their younger players mm -hmm. And also, so goes with USC because most of the players of USC are 18 year old, 17 yeah, 18, year old, 18, 19 years old. The, this is uh, this is practically a young team that we're having here for the Warriors, and and, and they're playing uh, probably one of the best collegiate teams in the in, in Metro Manila. Yes, the De La Salle Green Archers. This is just a good exposure for them. And uh, anytime you play against a good team, you have to think of the advantages, not just. Uh, to win the game but also what you will learn from it mm -hmm. that's correct Malabes exposure is always best yes losing that basketball Hermosa on the other side but Malabes makes up for that miss with a rebound missed opportunities again for the Warriors another good look there by pero sayang lang for Hermosa alam mo ang daming nami miss na layup ano from both sides now We'll talk about that later on as we have a timeout on the floor. The score is 43-34, DLSU by 9. We'll be right back. Philippine Collegiate Championships. It's the Sweet 16 DLSU against USC. Nine point lead only. And alam mo, Mike, hindi pa malayo itong uh, kalamangan nito. Kaya kaya pa ng USC. What do they have to do? Actually, uh, this is not. This is not actually. Uh, this is still a ball game that we're having here. Yes. Actually, uh, the Warriors just need to get something out of the DLSU defense and not get caught up with their staggered screens. They just have to play solidly on both the defensive end and, and on offense, they just need to take care of their turnovers. And Hello? they have some yes. good, uh, good open looks. Uh, while we were in the commercial break off the air, we were talking about uh, the things that USC could do in order to neutralize the offense of DLSU. And you mentioned that uh, they just have to put a body on JV Casho. Yeah, JV Casho, well, he's not on the floor yes. right now. Uh, but so far, Mangahas is on the floor. And that's the person that they should look out for. A missed opportunity again for USC. And Bagaching will set this one. Joshua Webb. As you can see, the whirlwind of screens there Ooh. for the Green Archers. And we were just talking about James Bangas. Oh. You really have to put, you really have to challenge one of the scorers of the Green Archers there. And take him out on the offense. Yeah. Hermosa over the row. Decides to take a three. Binawi, a three pointer, man. <laughs> <laughs> and they underestimated Emma Rowe there. Yes. And he was just standing there and waiting all day to take that shot. He did play in Melbourne, Australia as a wingman. Just mm -hmm. because of USC's lack of height, he plays as a big man here. Hiram Bagaching wala na namang nag-cover para sa USC doon. They just have to challenge a shot. As soon as somebody enters that paint, we should push the panic level there. The winner of this game, of course, will face the winner 
of the UVUE game. Of course, we know that uh, the University of Visayas, the champions of Sisafi and Cebu, will go up against the UE Red Warriors, another team that loves to run. Yeah, and uh, they had the hand there over at row, and still he made that shot. See, that's uh, what we're talking about. Yung opensa nitong uh, USC is hindi naman nagkukulang talaga. So another good defensive effort by the Warriors. An opportunity to bring this down to a single-digit lead. So Once far, they're again, doing a good job against the Green Archers. Only one shot per possession. There goes the press once more. Oh, he's again, an un again an unforced turnover. Bucket <laughs> Ching running, deciding to shoot it. Yes! Scores two more points for DLSU. And alam mo, kanina, like what you were saying, ano, another turnover, unforced yep. turnover. Just as when we were talking about locking down on James Mangas, and here you are not putting an eye on Bagatsing. Yeah. Our KFC assist delivery of the quarter. That one going to Emil Rowe, the three, made possible, of course, this assist by KFC. It's finger looking good. Actually, Emil Rowe did try out for a PBL, uh, for the PBL, but yes. unfortunately, he just didn't make it. That's why he will, uh, I guess, serve out his uh, playing year here uh, right. with, with uh, the USC. I believe he won't be able to play, I guess, yep. next season. Yeah, next season. Because uh, he may be a rookie this season, but he's already 21. Yeah. So he's really in for basketball. Yes. Emil Rowe, oh, throws it away again. And here comes JV Castro. We're talking about putting a body on him. Uh -huh. they, they did, did put a body. But PJ Barua is right there. Misses the shot. Rebound. Cortez saves it over to Rowe. Good effort by Cortez. It's number nine, Bautista. Now the Green Archers are trapping the shooters. Uh, they're extending their defense now. Trying to put away the, the, the shooters of the Warriors. Nine seconds left on the shot clock. Gallarde. As you can see, they're extending now. They're extending their defense. Three seconds left to shoot. Cantonao. Even with an arm up against them, Cantona will still hoist that shot. Again, another staple shot. Oh, the Warriors. sweet move by J.P. Casho. Getting the roll against three USC defenders. Again, uh, JV Kasha, a very creative scorer. Using his experience, experience to his advantage. Correct. Bautista, six seconds left on the game clock. They want to end the third quarter with a bang. The three-pointer, not good. And that is it for quarter number three. A 15-point lead by the De La Salle University Green Archers. We'll be back with the payoff period right here at the 2008 Phil Oil Flying V Philippine Collegiate Championships. Ladies and gentlemen, once more we'd like to thank our very gracious sponsors, Phil Oil Flying <laughs> Action here at the arena in San Juan, the 2008 Phil Oil Flying V Philippine Collegiate Championships. Miguel Torres along with Mike Abasolo and Aika Liave. And our quarter scores, the third quarter, Mike, both of these teams scored well. Mm -hmm. So far, uh, it's actually um, a good harvest for both mm -hmm. teams. <laughs> scores are very close. But, but it's the, still a 15-point yes. lead. Now, kanina na ibaba na sa sham yan, ano? Yeah, na sham. USC. But then, what happened? Uh, what happened? Why were they all of a sudden caught once again with a 15-point lead to start the, uh, the fourth quarter? Actually, we were ta talking about locking down some of the scorers of the Green Archers and not to commit too many unforced turnovers. If they want to get, uh, if they want to get back at this game and try, and at least try to trim down that lead, they have to take care of the basketball. Now, DLSU, this is a 15-point lead, but it's still nine minutes remaining, and that's more than an eternity. That's light years in the world of basketball. Mm -hmm. How do they maintain this lead? So far, the biggest blowout in this ball game was uh, yesterday. Uh, was the other game uh, uh, was with San Beda and so, uh, Recoletos with yes. a 30-plus. Oh. Uh, so far, we've been experiencing a 15-point lead. This is mm -hmm. actually the biggest so far in this ball game. 
Now, what do they do in order to maintain it? Ano nga uh, ibang kailangan gawin ng DLSU? Uh, do they have to press more or do they just need a little bit more patient? Well, una, Migo, patience. Uh, they just need to control this lead by, again, in basketball talaga, defense must be a constant. You have to play your game plan on defense at all times. So that's what they need to do to at least control this lead. Talking about control, Galliar, they're trying to control his shot, just hitting brick. Roe missing that three. Oh, but they're Malabes and Roe colliding in mid-air. And, and Malabes is down. That, and I guess I thought that was a volleyball yes. match there. <laughs> it actually looked like a football match. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like the wide receiver. <laughs> or a getting frisbee. A, yes. <laughs> Running for uh, our, our pass from a quarterback and then that getting was, it hit in the air. Yeah, well, that was a hard call by uh, Pater yes. Malabes. I know. Uh, he's still down. Let's look at that action again. Ooh. Yeah. Ow. Medyo sa may tadyang yun. Sa hip. Yes. Sakit yun. And definitely not a good sight to see if you look at the replay once again but, but no harm intended of course by Rowe they were actually going for the ball yes yes and yes accident, uh, accidents really do happen in basketball it does happen in basketball and you know it takes a lot of guts for guys to come back up from this one if we know Bader Malabes he'll be able to come back up it's just that he's in a lot of pain right now mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> pero let's talk about the game itself uh, with 849 remaining Mike 15 point lead you already said your piece about Lasal and USC now th this game we've seen glimpses of brilliance already from uh, the USC uh, from the USC Warriors and we all know that they can score mm -hmm. it's just that tulad nga ng sabi ni Coach Jay Ramirez nung halftime interview na um, anong, ano sa tingin mo ang uh, uh, ang iba pang dahilan well in defensively they have to communicate more there have been uh, so many mental lapses on defense uh, there, may, there have been so many uh, slips from underneath by, uh, by the Green Archers on the defense of the Warriors. And ito, again, they really have to take care of the basketball, not to be careless. Uh, just look for the real, again, the real open man, the first option, the open man. And um, just generally take care of the basketball. Alam mo kanina no Mike medyo nat natigilan ako ng konti dahil nakita ko eh no uh, you see you saw just saw Bader Malabes being carried by his whole team uh, that's a good sign of uh, being solid ano yung kanilang bonding as a team that more than teammates they're actually friends as you see JV Cashot really another jumper yeah actually that's a patented move by JV Cashot the step back jumper yes alam mo ilang beses natin nakita yan and every time I have to admit it. Every time I see that one, even when he does it with Pinot Otis, tumatayo pa rin yung balik. Oh, ang ganda lang panoorin talaga. <laughs> Definitely, I'm gonna miss this guy in Season 72, JV Casio. But you'll see more of him <laughs> in uh, the semi-pro league, of course, the PBL. Yeah, you're gonna see more of yes. him, Nico. <laughs> <laughs> Bagatsing. Oh, loose is the handle. Mm -hmm. now, now they're paying attention to Bagatsing. But then 57 to 40, yep. umangat na sa 17 ang kalamangan nitong Green Archers. Yeah. There's not much strength on his dribble there. That's the reason why he lost the ball. And, he, and some of the Warriors were able to tap, them, tap it away. Well, initially, this guy played as a shooting guard. Uh, as we thank our friends from KFC and Smart for helping us out with the 2008 Philippine Collegiate Championship. Bagating passes it over to Mendoza. Oops! Again, a careless, just a bit. Yeah, again, a careless pass by Baker. Stolen there, again. Yeah, so again, a turnover. They really have to take care of the basketball. Yes. Mark Mendoza, uh, one of the new guys here from uh, the national team, the RP youth team. Almost uh, still there, but then they were able to take control once again. Igao in the ball game for Coach Jay Ramirez. Galliarde Cantonao to Igao decides to drive Galliarde open for two it's short partially deflected by Barua oh look at the USC guys fight for the basketball but then nobody ran back down to cover PJ Barua he gets that fast break it's a 19 point lead already Mike actually he was just watching yeah while PJ Barua was like taking off Yun you saw that that time Galliarde 
challenging the shot was called for a foul but nonetheless you know you won't there's a difference between just watching and trying to play defense yeah. denying him the satisfaction of seeing his shot go in yeah. <laughs> you, you just can't stand and watch <laughs> timeout being called by USC we'll be right back In action as you see Maui Villanueva, our player info on him, June 18, 1988, from Manila, sports management in La Salle, likes math. Wow. I, I should take some uh, courses with this guy <laughs> on math. And favorite player, the king, LeBron James. Mm -hmm. You know, Maui Villanueva is uh, one of the bright spots for Coach Franz Pumarin. Not just because of his uh, intensity in defense, but the intangibles that he does. He's the, one of the guys that is not afraid to mix it up and get down and dirty. Yep. Uh, Maui Villanueva is my, one of my players that you uh, call a filler yes. in your system. Let's go courtside to Aikaliave. The archers will have to make all of their shot counts as we come into the crucial part of this do or die game. Coach Jay reminded his boys not to give up too soon. Now unfortunately for the archers, one of their key players, Mader Malabas, is down after a bad fall against a clutch with USC Sam Rowe. Now who knows, this might be a chance for the Warriors to try to win this game. Back to you guys. Thank you very much. A sound uh, of an angel from Michael. <laughs> Don't you think so? Huh? <laughs> I thought I mean I was in heaven. Wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mike Abasolo. <laughs> well, back to the ball game. Alam mo, uh, Bader Malabes and his fall ano, will definitely be big if he won't be able to play in the next round. Because you need Bader Malabes for his uh, tenacity in on offense. Definitely. Yeah. On offense, his shooting. Well, he's yes. so far. He also disappeared last year. It was a disappointment. Yes. Uh, we, they need the shooting, his perimeter presence. Yes, so. but uh, uh, he did play quite well here in the early goings of uh, their game here against USC. And he will sorely miss if he won't be able to play. But then again, you know, kailangan mo rin naman intindihin yung welfare ng player mo. Of course, of course. Of course. Now, 62 to 40, 22 point lead right now. 22 point lead. The and the green archers, as you can see, are now playing zone. With uh, Ferdinand, uh, Barua, and of course Mendoza going under. Our KFC assist delivery of the quarter. Hiram Bagaching over to BJ Barua for that fast break opportunity. KFC, it's looking good. Well, so far the Green Archers here don't have a legitimate big man, so they can afford to play zone just to cover each other up. And this is also quite a fast lineup if you uh, take a look at it. In a shooting lineup, you yep. have Bagatching, Casho, and Barua. Casho, yep. pass for three, doesn't get the roll. Oh, Ferdinand almost got that rebound. This is actually a practice game for Bagatching for uh, for the point guard position yes. that he might probably play in season 72. You know, kumapapansin ninyo, folks, uh, those of you guys who uh, watch the games of the De La Salle University Green Archers, you'd notice that Simon Atkins, their usual uh, first string point guard is not playing today. Mm -hmm. Probably and he is also on television. Yes. Maybe. And uh, and, uh, and a revealer, their second string point guard is also not playing. So yeah, with an injury. Yes. So both of their guards mm -hmm. are or their two point guards, the ones that they rely the most. Eh, hindi nagalaro dito. So somebody has to step up with point guard duties. Hiram Bagaching doing a well a decent job. Yeah, at decent point job. Guard. He also had the good, decent looks from the three point area that he converted yes. earlier. Oh, PJ Barua. Anticip great anticipation by PJ, PJ Baru again. One the again. Warriors will have to take care of the basketball. Nanunood na naman. Yeah. Itong uh, depensa ng USC. You know, those, those were two green shirts. Just yep. right, almost just half a step behind. So far, so far, the Warriors are not playing with emotion right now. They're just going they're, through uh, the motion. Go going through the motion. Their shoulders are down. So I guess they're gonna call it a game. Well, you probably. Know, I'm sure that Coach Jay Ramirez doesn't want that to happen this early. With still 5.23 remaining, we've seen teams come back from bigger deficits, definitely. 
Pero yun nga lang, pag naubusan ka ng moral as you see J.B. Casho just drilling a three straight to the hearts of UFC. Yeah. <laughs> Again, mo, pag naubusan ka ng moral, wala na. Oh. Especially, the Green Archer will definitely put the pressure on you like what they're doing right now. And this is a team that if they smell blood, once they sense that you're about to go down, they will take advantage, yeah. won't give you an option. Yeah. Yep. They're gonna get a straw <laughs> and trying to suck that blood out. Yeah. As you saw just about uh, a while ago, about mm -hmm. a, a few seconds ago, the turnover once again for uh, courtesy of the full court press. Yep. General uh, Hoven now is in the ball game, trying to add stability. Hopefully, try. Well, we're trying. We're gonna hope that this lead would be cut down, trimmed down at least. PJ Barua, the shot. Ni Pumasok, the rebound taken by Bagatsing. Oh, Barua, that will be traveling. Na excite ng konti si PJ Barua. Na lata excite that because the lane was really wide open for him to go to go through. Yes. Once again, USC, the defensive woes continue. Ragin Lee coming in for PJ Barua. Another uh, minutes for Rejan Lee to get some uh, experience and uh, also to hold his skills. And Almo, Rejan Lee would be an integral part of this team once JV Casho. Yep, that's a 1 3 1 zone, half court zone press for the Green Archers, and then gonna go switch to a zone. Yes, in a half court. Like what I'm saying, I do see Rejan Lee. Uh, what JV Casho is about to uh, finish his playing years, and also, uh, what you call this? But their Malabes is uh, his, uh, questionable right now. Yep. So it would be up to the other guards to step up, and this is definitely an opportunity for Bagatsing and Rajan Lee. Mm -hmm. Trying to show what they're made of. So, so far, a 4 0 run here by the Warriors. Two breakaway layups for them. Well, that's a rarity in yes. this ballgame for but them. But it's still a 20 point lead, as you see, Ferdinand trying to. Get that shot to fall in. Binibig nga lang ng konte hindi yep. masok Mike. It's a four-zero run. Maybe trying to get some spark here. If they shoot, uh, or if they get this one in, it will be confidence on their part. Mm -hmm. Pero nga lang na. Uh, see another turnover partner, ano? Hermosa stepping on the line. As see Maui San. He played for UPIS in high school and stayed in Japan. Wow. Yes. Okay, that's a. Very expensive country to stay in. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he embodied the uh, the good old Japanese trait of hard work. Yep. <laughs> I like yeah. to be in his shoes right now. Maui Villian Weber, of course. Bagaching gives it over to Maui San. The three short. Hoven with a rebound. Itamo, all the white shirts run back down yep. so quick yeah that's the discipline and conditioning that you have when you play against the green archers uh really discipline and defense the, and the, the, condi plus the, plus oh. the conditioning up, just running up and down the floor sanay na sanay. i guess it's all uh because of their experience with the press playing the press mostly for 30 Ooh. minutes of the ball game what a nice play coming from the LaSalle Green Archers that makes the lead balloon back up to 22 243 remaining we'll be right back And in eight Philippine Collegiate Championships. Let's look at this slow motion replay. Ray John Lee, Maui Villanueva, and Joshua Webb taking care of, care of things for the Jalasal Green Archers. 69 to 47. Good teamwork. Yeah, great pass by Ray John Lee on the first option. Yes, and, and making that extra pass for Maui Villanueva. The mm -hmm. I guess this is also uh, his experience on their part. And yung tagal nilang naglalaro, mag magkakasama. Eh. Mm -hmm. They haven't much practice time, but you know, the familiarity yes. that they have definitely is a major plus for them. When you go up against uh, a whole lot of challenges during their collegiate uh, league, you know, I'm sure that masasanit, masasanit talaga kayo sa isa't isa as USC runs their shot clock out. Mm -hmm. 
good defense by De La Salle, but then again, ano, nahirapan din mag-ikot ng bola itong uh, USC. Actually, they had some good open looks. They weren't just able to make those shots. Uh, talagang it was just poor execution. Sobra, sobra sa sobra. pag-iisip. Yeah. <laughs> Not reading much of the defense, but they read the defense very well. They had some good open looks. Alfred Vito. Phil M, who previously played in Guam in the ball game for Coach Jay Ramirez, a huge mountain to climb. 69-47, DLSU in the lead. Sweet 16 action. Last two minutes. Last two minutes. This is the Phil Oil last two minutes, folks. And uh, well, you just heard the the voice of. Uh, Mr. Rolly Manlapa said, ang lalim talaga ng lalim ni Rolly. Lalim talaga ng very deep. 69-47. Oven still calling out the play. I know that stranger things have happened always, uh, mm-hmm. Mike. But then again, at 140 remaining, 22-point lead, it's quite a It's quite obvious. It's yes. quite obvious that this is a ball game for the De La Salle Green Archers. Who will face yes. against uh, either the UV Green Lancers or the UE Red Warriors? Another great match that you should definitely look forward to here at the Philippine Collegiate Championships. Joshua Webb, he tries to use the board, doesn't get the roll. Rebound by number 15, Padillo. Alamo, Mike, looks like uh, this will be it ano, for USC. But then they gotta keep their head high. It, yeah. it was, it was a good uh, fight that they fought, mm-hmm. especially during the first half. But then again, oh, you have a team God. that's so experienced and so uh, explosive. Yep, it's that, a well-oiled yes. machine that hasn't had much practice time. But as you can see, the familiarity, wa- and the experience that they had over the the Warriors, and the fact that most of uh, San Carlos' players. Is, our, is actually 18, 17, 19. Yeah. Practically young. Yes. And this is a great exposure for them. It's actually also a humbling experience for them. Yes, you know, that, you, you know that so much work to do ahead. Uh-huh. And as you said, uh, you got a lot of work ahead for them. You know, you may be the best in another league, but then when you come and face the best, you will definitely know the level of competition uh-huh. that the Philippine basketball has to offer. And great venue here at the, the Philippine Collegiate Championships. Yep, you have to play the best so you can proclaim somehow proclaim yourself, to be, yourself to be the best in the Well, in the country. country. Yeah. 69-48. Chandumal misses his free throw. Mm-hmm. Let's talk a bit about uh, UV versus UE. You know, we've covered UV before and we know their weapons. We also know the weapons of UE. Mm-hmm. And somehow it's a it's a contrast of styles because UE they got big men that run and gun. Yeah. And meanwhile, UV has Greg Slaughter and there's his their main man. Lot of plays go through him. Actually, all four, all, only four players will play him on, on the open court except yes. for Greg Slaughter. We know we know <laughs> that. You know we we know that how how, seen how Greg Slaughter play. Yeah, how, how I criticized that Greg Greg Slaughter for being a big man and yes. how slow he is and how how probably lazy he is. I'm trying to be open about this. But <laughs> you know, that if you want to play the UE Red Warriors, you have to be on your toes because they are actually a clone of the Big yes. Archers Express. And, and and they're big guys such as like Elmer Espirito or Nani Yagas. They really, really run the floor a lot. Yes, and Hans Tiele also. So those are guys that will not be afraid to go up against 6'11", especially when they're together on the floor, which is which happens a lot of uh, a lot of the time. Yeah. But then the UV Green Lancers also have guys in uh, Diputado. They also have guys in uh, Lanete. Lanete. Mm-hmm. Who will definitely carry the Cinco load? Flores. Cinco Flores oh, is there. Really, yeah, who, can, who are really athletic and really can go on the open court. Actually, they're also shooters like yes. Danete and Cinco Flores. They can also hit the three. But Listen, the key here is, you, you know, you don't have to be intimidated by the presence of uh, another good team like the UE Red Warriors. Well, they are the champions in their league. They're. <laughs> They've always been the champions in yeah. Sasafi. So far, yeah, they are the eight-time Sasafi champions. As you see, Bautista drain a three-pointer from way out. Too late, of course. As uh, the archers still want to get a shot off. Wow. Just talk about the the energy. Yeah, it's actually garbage points now. Garbage time points. 
for uh, both of these squads pero makita mo talaga eh, no? the desire of DLSU to get quality basketball not giving up till the last second as you see Ray John Lee missed that shot 20 point lead by De La Salle University and they take this one 71 to 51 against the University of San Carlos Warriors of Cebu that it's means yes, yes Mike. it's actually a gallant effort by the by the University of San Carlos Warriors to be in this call, call game it was actually pretty close in the first half but you know the experience the familiarity with each other of the Green Archers really took its toll against the the Warriors, Warriors. Uh, of course guys named Casio Meyerhofer <laughs> yeah Barua Bagatsing yes Heron Bagatsing played a very good game mm -hmm. if I may say and I tried to control in the absence of LaSalle's top two point guards he was able to do a decent job bringing the ball down and mm -hmm. taking care of it try to and, control the tempo of the and, game yeah and let loose uh, JV Casio on the offensive end who will be our best player well Aika Liave has him with her right now all right we're here with the best player of the game Hiram Bagatin congratulations Hiram Thank you. Wow, that's 11 points. My rebounds, not bad. Now, what was your, um, what was in your mind going into this ball game, knowing that this is a crucial one? Um, just as much as possible, try to play my role and step up as a point guard. Just try to, I'm trying to work on my skills as a point guard. So, Coach Francis just, just said, try to push the ball as much as you can and just hit the open players. So that's all I did. So, what do you think will be the uh, team's uh, adjustments on your next game? Um, I guess just keep working on our defense because that's you know. Uh, what really helps us win this game. So just really focus on defense as much as possible. All right, thank you, Hiram. Good luck in your next game. Back to you guys. Thank you very much, Aika. That was Hiram Bagatin. Great night for him. 11 points, 9 rebounds, almost a double-double effort, and 4 assists. We'll be right back to wrap up this game. Phil Oil Flying V Philippine Collegiate Championships 71 to 51 De La Salle University lording this one over the University of San Carlos Warriors of Cebu and that was a good match at least in the early goings of the uh, of the game yep that's right amigo uh, the Warriors really stood toe-to-toe -to -toe against the Green Archers in this game primarily in pre preferably in the third quarter when the score uh, when, the, when their scores were really tied uh, in the first half, uh, they should toe to toe both offensively and defensively. It was generally a good game. But then the explosiveness was, uh, and experience, of course, of the Green Archers uh, proved to be too much for the Warriors. Let's look at the updated bracketing of our Sweet 16. DLSU, with their win today over USC, would move on to the round of eight and will face either the winner of the UV UE match. Of course, that's a matchup to look forward to in the next uh, coming games. Your bold prediction? Mark Actually, it's, uh, it's gonna be close. It's gonna be quickness <laughs> versus uh, size. Yeah, size. <laughs> that will be tomorrow. Our games at Aliano University will go up against Universal College, and of course, the game between UV and UE. That's uh, tomorrow, November twenty-seven. And uh, you know, Aliano University has Daroya. Or yeah. along their side so I Syracuse believe. and uh, Delano but yes. we, we don't underestimate this team the Universal College of our Nursing Golden Dragons mm -hmm. they're also uh, an, an, a nice team to watch you know what there are no easy games here in the Philippine Collegiate Championships because these are the best of the best in the whole country well that's it for us thank you very much for watching in behalf of Mike Abasolo this has been Miguel Torres thank you very much and keep it right here thank you very much for watching